I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin in my garden. I am looking around assessing the damage after a triple digit heat wave. Yeah, we got up to 107. I'm about to do a late summer succulent assessment. We're going to take a look and see what needs attention and discuss what to do about it. For comparison's sake, you might want to see my earlier video that I did in the spring in which I showed you the garden looking at its absolute peak of perfection. So now in late summer, it's looking its absolute worst for the year. But first, we are going to tackle a sunburned agave attenuata. I had a tree that had died taken out. The plants around it got too much sun. There's some damage, but they'll recover. And you go one cut, and then you do a second cut that follows the shape of the leaf. Why cut it at a point? For aesthetic reasons. The plant doesn't care. In fact, it doesn't care if you prune it at all. Is it a little lopsided? Yes. But does it look 100% better? I think so. I could do a whole video just on echeverias and heat and how to get them through the summer. You can see this one got a little bit of sunburn even though every day during the heat of the day I covered them with this non-woven fabric. That is edema. The result of cell collapse. The plant is trying to draw water from its leaves like succulents do to survive drought. So yeah, it'll recover. They lose their lowest leaves. Hopefully it'll look fine by the winter. That's not a mealy bug down there, is it? Oh, it is! Your mealy bugs proliferate this time of year. If it says 90%, you want to dilute it. But if it's 70%, you're okay using it full strength. Oh. Anything else infested? clean as a whistle. But if I hadn't gotten the mealybugs off of the other plants, they would have migrated over here. Very difficult to get rid of. Also check your Haworthias. Anything that has deep crevices. So every time I water this, which is not very often because it's cactus, but every time I water it, I just blast it right down into the openings to discourage any mealybugs. Sunset jade showing some heat stress. See the under leaves are perfectly fine and the plant will recover beautifully. You don't really know how a plant's going to come through weather extremes, but you can get an idea that maybe it's suffering. This is a cutting of a dragon fruit, a tropical succulent that I really hoped would take hold. Well, actually it's rooted. So it's green on the other side. Well, maybe there's hope yet. I got this agave nizandensis at a Cactus and Succulent Society show. It has the potential to redden and be really pretty, but it was not happy in the high heat. I had this window screen, so I tossed it over that, and it really helped protect it. I'm thinking about maybe moving that. Here's the challenge. The closer you live to the desert, the harder to stress your succulents to beautiful, bright shades of red without killing them. There are a lot of benefits to living in the desert, but that's not one of them. I planted mangaves here thinking that they would look marvelous, and indeed I think they would have, except this is a microclimate that gets way too much sun. It's very exposed. Yep, it's going to go into mangave terrace. Sounds like a, a Southern California housing development, doesn't it? So most of the mangaves got moved except for this one and a couple of others that have toughed it out. But I don't like to have to cover plants in extreme conditions. So I want them to be able to make it. So maybe I'll just redo this terrace with cactus. Yes, that's a mangabe, but ah, we're not going to digress. These aeoniums look terrible, but that's what they do. At the end of summer, they're still dormant. You can see they've closed their rosettes to protect their green inner cores. So all that's very healthy and fine down in there, no big deal. In the winter with the rainy season, they'll lose those outermost leaves, which they would anyway, produce new growth from the center of the rosettes, and they'll be glorious by the spring. 
This beautifully striped agave americana has undulating leaves. Where the leaf folds over, it gets more exposure to the sun and can burn. So what I end up doing is just cutting those damaged leaves to a point or whack them off close to the center core of the plant. This agave americana marginata is in dappled shape for most of the day, and it doesn't have that problem. We're down where I have a puntia planted as a security fence. That's quite dry and woody in there. And I imagine, you know, I could have watered it more, but I thought it was getting plenty. It needs hydraulic pressure to keep it upright. Now I can, of course, take those fallen pads and plant them as cuttings. But if I do nothing, this is what'll happen. Summertime in the desert southwest, the monsoon season. That's when they naturally get water. The plants expect it and need it. Now this whole area of paddle cactus gets no irrigation. I forget it needs some supplemental hose watering in the summertime. And if they're prone to cochineal scale, you can kill two birds with one stone. I mean, blasting the scale off is one way to deal with it, but a better way is to scrub it off gently. Find out about that on my YouTube video on cochineal scale. That was as prized as silver by the Spaniards when they conquered the New World.